grace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus, as who, at whose birth mercy and truth are met together, and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Amen. Please be seated. I seem to be stumbling over all my words today. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> I know you've been hearing all these sermons. Uh, for the last few days. How wonderful that we have been coming to the Lord's house for the last three consecutive days. Are we ready to stop all the festivities? Well, not yet. Are you ready to go? What I mean is, are you ready to leave? No, I don't mean right at this very moment. It would be nice if you would stick around till the end of the service. <laughs> But then at the end of the service, will you be ready to leave? By that I mean, will you be ready to leave in peace, satisfied and content and ready for whatever comes next? What makes you ready to leave? To leave any situation? For instance, this year is coming to a close. And these last couple of years have been a roller coaster. We no more close me what it means to be lonely at Christmas, or what it means to have an empty seat on the table at the loss of the loved one. So are you ready to put 2021 behind you and move on to whatever 2022 may bring? What makes you ready to leave, even to leave this life? Now I know during Christmas season, all kinds of weird sermons have been given. And for whatever uh, inadequacies there have been, they belong to the pastor. And whatever good is there in the sermon, they are because of the grace and mercy of God. But there have been weird questions being asked throughout this Christmas season. On Christmas Eve, the question was, why are you here? <laughs> On Christmas Day, the question was, how will we be saved? And today we are asking you already, are you ready to leave? Weird questions to be asked during Christmas season. Of course, these are troubling times of the plague. Death has always seemed closer than ever before. That day could happen any day, you know, any hour. Now there's a new variant. So the question is relevant, are you ready to go? If the Lord were to decide to call you home, your true home, that is heaven, even today, would you be ready? If not, why not? If so, what would make the difference? Today in the Holy Gospel, we met a man who was ready to go. He was ready for whatever might happen next. And we find out in this text why he was ready. What made the difference? This man's name is Simeon, and I think we can learn something from him today about what it means to depart in peace. So let's just set the scene up. It's 40 days already after the birth of Christ. We are in Jerusalem. We are going to the temple. Let's follow that holy family as they trudge to the temple. Why? Because 40 days after the birth of a firstborn son, the father and mother were supposed to go to the temple and offer up a sacrifice to the Lord. It is in the law of Moses. It is in the Old Testament reading that was written. Because the firstborn sons of Israel were spared at, from death at the time of the Passover in Egypt. Those boys, or the firstborn, were to be dedicated to the Lord and His service. Theoretically, they were supposed to serve at the temple. But the Lord God set apart the whole tribe of Levi to be kind of the designated hitters, to take the place of the boys from these other tribes. Only on this occasion, however, there is a firstborn son from the tribe of Judah, the lion, the tribe of the kings, coming into the temple, who will also go on to be the priest supreme, making the ultimate sacrifice for all people. 
Do you see him, Joseph and Mary, carrying this 40-day-old Jesus into the temple now? What? You can't tell which couple is carrying the baby into the temple? Is the one I'm talking about? No, you can. And that's the point. There was nothing special. There was no special effects, no halos to distinguish the Holy Family of Joseph, Mary, and the Holy Child from all other families in that day. They were literally your next door neighbors. Joseph was quite literally the Joe next door. And that's how it would have appeared to Simeon too. Had the Lord not given him a special revelation by the Holy Spirit. And that is how God chooses to reveal Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And it is written that there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And it is written here, the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took up in his arms the blessed Lord Jesus and blessed God. Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel, it says. He was waiting for the comfort the Lord had promised to his people. Prophet Isaiah says, comfort, comfort my people. And Simeon was waiting and wanting to see the fulfillment of that promise. But now here it comes, the consolation, the comfort is being carried in right before their eyes. The consolation comes in the person of this little baby. The Holy Spirit reveals to Simeon that he is seeing the Lord's Christ. This is the Messiah, the Christ, the promised deliverer king who will bring in God's kingdom of comfort and consolation. Promises are being fulfilled. The Lord had told Simeon that he would not die before the arrival of the Messiah. Now the Christ had come. Simeon thanks God for fulfilling his special promise to him. And so now Simeon, presumably an old man, as our bulletin today tells, shows us, Simeon thanks God and now he is ready to see death. If that is what is, is, is in store for him. And before that, he takes the little baby, Jesus, in his arms and utters this beautiful psalm of praise. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared in the presence of all people a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Now here is what it means to be ready to depart in peace. It's to know and to experience the salvation that the Lord has prepared and promised. That's what Simeon experienced when he saw baby Jesus with his own eyes and held him in his old and feeble arms. Because of this salvation come in the person of Jesus, now Simeon knows he is at peace and ready for whatever comes next, even his own death. Now, he could depart in peace. How would that peace, that salvation, that consolation come about? That's where our text goes next. Joseph and Mary were marveling at what Simeon said about their baby. And Simeon blesses them and says to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many, and for a sign that is opposed. And so there are many opposers to Christ. And it says, a sword will pierce through your soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. 
You see, this consolation will come through conflict. The salvation will come through suffering and sorrow. The peace will come through a cross. Mother Mary will experience sorrow like a sword piercing her soul. When one day she will see her son suffering shame, humiliation, and death on a cross. But that is how salvation will come. That is how it must come. Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Mary, true God and true man, will suffer, die for the sins of all men, winning our forgiveness. And with Christ's sacrificial death comes the salvation, the peace, the consolation we need so very much. So how is it with you, dear friends, brothers and sisters of the Lord? Are you ready to depart in peace? Can you say with Simeon, yes, Lord, I am ready to go. I am ready for whatever comes next. Now you may not have laid your eyes on the infant Christ being carried into the temple. You would not have held that little baby in your arms. But here's what you do have. You have the same word of God given to Simeon. Your ears have heard the word of the Lord. Your eyes have seen with the eyes of faith what God has laid before you. The path of peace leading all the way to heaven through faith. In Jesus Christ and you have received and you will again receive today the very body and blood of your Savior in this holy sacrament dear Christian brothers and sisters Simeon has nothing on you you are just as blessed you are just as comforted you are just as ready to go to depart in peace you know, that is why the church sings the song of Simeon right after receiving the Lord's body and blood, right before the end of the service. It's because we can identify, we know what Simeon went through. We have received the same Savior from our lips into our heart, into our life. And we can sing Simeon's song. The Nunc Dimittis it is called. No, it is simply the Latin title for the opening words, Now you let depart. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy will, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Yes, we can say this, and we do put our amends to that. With joy and gladness we praise God for the salvation that comes to us freely and fully in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we can face whatever is going to come our way this week or in this year to come, whether that means health issues, financial issues, broken relationships, struggles with depression or loneliness, whatever is going to come our way, we are ready. Even death. If the Lord should decide, it's our time to go. We are ready, not because of our merits, but because of the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, the infant Messiah, the man dying on the cross, the risen Savior. This is the one who speaks to us his words of peace. This is the one who has the words of eternal life. And this is God's promise to you that you have forgiveness, peace, and with them, everlasting life because of this Jesus Christ. What hope for the new year, what peace that surpasses all understanding, what joy to know the Savior, what blessing it brings to you and your family and to this congregation. Nothing else like it. Nothing else can fill the void and the vacuum you have apart from Christ. Dr. Luther says that all of us carry a little hole in the heart and the cross fits there perfectly. The cross and our crucified Lord. And so because of Jesus, we are ready to face whatever comes our way. 
Simeon, we hear you. Your song is our song too. For Christ has come into this temple, and the Holy Spirit has revealed him to us here also in the breaking of the bread. Now we are ready to depart in peace. Come, Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace. 